Good evening. Like most of us, my mind wanders from time to time, and I get random thoughts like, what would it be like to live in the Stone Age? Seriously, I think about how uncomfortable I'd be wearing skins, <laughs> and how without central heating or air conditioning, I'd probably be cold and clammy and hot and sweaty all the time, except for those two days in the fall. But seriously, Stone Age people had to work with the materials that they had at hand. If you take a walk in the forest, you realize what they had. They had wood, they had bark, leaves, berries, twigs, animals, insects, stuff like that. But nothing else. And out of that, they found strategies to produce shelter, provide food, warmth, and protection. So how did they do that? Well, maybe a better question to ask is, how do human beings just in general learn things for the first time? Because that's what they had to do. We think of knowledge today and learning in terms of what is conveyed to us. Somebody comes and tells us what's true and what knowledge is. And in the Stone Age, they had to figure it out for themselves. and It was a lot more complicated process. They had to observe carefully. They had to create ideas and test those ideas. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So it's thought that modern human beings evolved from a branch of primates about 200,000 years ago. But it's also thought that those people were no different than us today, except in their experience level. So if you take a look at that and you say, OK, if the only difference between me and somebody from 200,000 years ago is what we've learned from somebody else or what we've experienced, then how do people figure out things? How do they discover things for the first time? How do you learn without instruction? Well, you have to accept the fact that people have limitations, and they did as well. They only had their senses and their ability to remember or recall things, and they had their brains for processing. So the senses include basically the normal ones, what you'd expect. Uh, sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. And there's also senses like the kinesthetic sense of you can feel yourself move. You can also sense time. And you are also familiar with different things. That's what they had to work with. And using these senses, they developed strategies in their environment where they could discern little differences that helped them exploit you know, the resources that they had available. It's this ability to compare things to decide whether or not something is larger or smaller, faster or slower, or if there's more of one thing or another thing, that really conveys an awful lot of the sense of knowledge that people have in their lives. And that's one of the best ways to teach people. And it turns out by extension that this is how we learn, and that we really can't conceive of things that are outside of our experience level. In other words, we generally learn by analogy. Somebody says, here, I'll compare this characteristic of this to you, and you'll understand it that way. And that's pretty much how we learn. But anyway, getting back to the Stone Age, if you look at the early Stone Age, um, the, the archaeological remains of things like campfires or stone tools and things like that, we think we understand pretty much what it was like back then. There were small groups of people wandering around, chasing food sources, hunting and gathering. And it's thought that language developed as a way to basically enhance cooperation between people searching for food. But I'd also argue that there's another aspect that was equally important, and that the fact that they had to develop a, a method for observing things and drawing conclusions from what they saw. Because this is the thing that gave them the ability to understand migration of animals and to understand when it was the best time to go and pick those berries because they were ripe. So these are very, very important characteristics. Another thing that they were able to do was discern patterns. They watched the motion of the sun in the heavens, the way the moon's phases changed, the way the stars tracked across the sky. So they got to understand patterns in time. And these are all key components to human understanding. So if we take a look at it and we say, OK, this ability to compare things leads to grouping. And grouping is a precursor to counting. So we know that early humans didn't have an ability to count or do math. Uh, in fact, there's languages in existence today 
where there's a concept of one or few or many, but no specific numbering system. And that's the way things were for quite a while. Until about 20,000 years ago, we find an artifact called the Ishango bone, which has three columns of tally marks uh, cut into it. And the fact that these marks are so regular and so organized, we know that it wasn't developed by a random process, that it was done there as an intentional act to record a number. This was uh, sufficient for, for a very long time, from about 20,000 years to about 6,000 years ago. Um, the number of humans didn't uh, increase greatly, and this seemed to be uh, a, a process that was adequate for them. But around 6,000 years ago, a number of things started to happen. This is when agriculture started to take off. And it started to take off because it was successful. Agricultural products were nutritious, durable, and easy to store. And they were a much more reliable way of getting food. So this attracted people to areas where agriculture was easier to do, you know, river valleys and things like that that were inundated with new material every year to make them more fertile. So people tended to congregate in those areas, and that's why you see the first cities growing in these regions. And the human populations would grow and people would settle there for long periods of time. And one of the things that ended up happening is that these people had to shift their focus away from understanding the migration of animals and how to gather wild foodstuffs, and they turned their attention to better ways to do agriculture. And they used the same characteristics, qualities, and abilities that help them be successful as nomads to agriculture and to making agriculture better. So one of the things that they realized is that they needed a better calendar. Sure, they had tracked, you know, approximately what year it was or what time of year it was according to, you know, vague cues and lunar cycles and things like that, but their calendars weren't precise enough. So it appears that because they stayed in one place long enough, somebody was able to notice that the sun tracked more southerly, this is in the northern hemisphere, in the wintertime and moved back up north in the summertime. And what somebody probably did is they set up an observation point and they started to use a fixed landmark to basically track where the sun rose and set every day. And eventually this, these turned into these stone circles like Stonehenge and these other observatories and temples where people followed the movement of the sun. And this all happened in the Stone Age. And they developed really, really robust calendars this way. And it helped them be more successful as farmers. So let's take a look at what we're, we're talking about here. What did they do? So as I mentioned, they observed what was going on. They tracked or measured the movement of the sun. They recorded the number of days in the year. And they did this over a period of time. In other words, they tested it. What does that sound like to you? Well, the scientific method is a systematic observation, measurement, and experiment process where you formulate, modify, and test hypotheses. In essence, they were doing the scientific method. So this is going all the way back into what we would now kind of classify as prehistory. The humans were doing this. And in fact, human beings have been doing this probably as long as human beings existed because there were a number of developments and things that were successful even before the advent of agriculture. So I guess I would argue that this is just part of who we are. So if we look at all this together, you'd have to say the scientific method is something that has existed and is part of the human DNA since the beginning and in fact, this predates measurement, it predates mathematics, because mathematics were just developed in order to explain the measurements that were made in using the scientific method. So ultimately, whatever the forces were that made us who we are, we were made to do science. And we can enhance those abilities in the same way that we can enhance any ability that we have, the same as throwing a ball. You can get better at it. So in this day and age where technology is so pervasive in our lives, it might be a good idea to encourage observational skills, to teach your kids how to take measurements, 
to try new ideas, to openly talk about results, and to encourage constructive failure. We might learn something. Wonderful. Thank you.